You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Cooper Corporation, how may I direct your call? Just a moment. Cooper Corporation. Coffee coming through. Who ordered coffee? With sugar and two creams. Right here. Thanks, Louie. You got it. Coffee here. Uh, do you have any Danish this morning? I got bran muffins, granola bars, and trail mix. Oh, no. What happened to the Danish? Mr. Cooper's orders. Mr. Cooper, how come? He's on a health kick. Says Danish is bad for you. For the whole office? Everybody on the floor. He wants more work out of you. Oh, well. I suppose I'll have one of those granola bars. Is it chocolate-coated? K-Rob. Sounds positively yummy. Guess I'll give it a try. Hey, that's wrong, you know. What is, McNulty? Well, the pastries are bad for the brain. True, they're mostly sugar and starch, but so are muffins, huh? <laughs> granola bars? Granola bars have as much fat as 13 strips of bacon. Did you know that? And trail mix? <laughs> Forget it! Forget it! There's so many calories and saturated fats, you might as well eat a tub of popcorn, huh? <laughs> With butter! <laughs> <sighs> well, if Mr. Cooper wants to improve productivity... All I know is I got coffee with cream, cream and sugar, cream by itself, sugar by itself, or artificial sweetener. And that old favorite, all black. Take your pick. Ah, diversification. Now you, you're on the right track. As I always say, you can't run a business standing still. A business has got to move. A business has got to progress. You think about that now. Excuse me, I got to progress through the office. Yeah, so do I. We all do. A business has got to keep pushing, keep punching, keep prodding, keep moving forward. That's what a business has got to do. Now, you think about that. <laughs> Personally, I got to get a drink of water. <clears throat> you coming, Gertrude? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I think I better go with you. Ah, sounds good. I think I'll come along, too. Oh, that's, that's all right. right. Hey, did you know that water is the most important part of a healthy diet? We're almost all water. I mean, our cells feed off of it, right? <laughs> hey, you see that suggestion box on the wall? I personally told Mr. Cooper to get better quality bottled water. Huh? Huh? But the chemicals they put in it these days, I mean, think about it now. It's a disgrace. Not to mention... Submitted for your approval, or at least your analysis, one Patrick Thomas McNulty who, at age 41, is the biggest bore on Earth. He holds a 10-year record for the most meaningless words spewed out during a typical coffee break. And it's very likely that, as of this moment, he would have gone on through life in precisely the same manner, a dull, argumentative big mouth who sets back the art of conversation at least a thousand years. I say he very likely would have, except for something that will soon happen to him. Something totally unexpected that will considerably alter his existence and ours. You think about that now, because this is, after all, The Twilight Zone. And now we continue with our story from The Twilight Zone, A Kind of Stopwatch, starring Lou Diamond Phillips, with Stacey Keach as your narrator. Um, you can taste the impurities. We need clean air, too. HEPA filters, air ionizers, the whole bit, huh, you know? And these rooms need a new paint job while they're at it, you know? I mean, a nice, soothing color. Come on, Angie. Let's go to the powder room. Yeah, I'm with you. Because we got to keep this company on track. You think about it now. We, we will. will. McNulty. Right here. Mr. Cooper would like to see you. Well... Well, you hear that, everybody? Huh? 
Mr. Cooper would like to see McNulty, huh? <laughs> and all because of that box right there. You know why Mr. Cooper wants to see McNulty? Because McNulty has been feeding him suggestions in that box for 11 months now. Did I say suggestions? Wrong word. Suggestions any Claude can give, huh? <laughs> but dynamic blueprints for the future only McNulty can give, huh? <laughs> you just think about that. Mr. Cooper's waiting, Mr. McNulty. In here, McNulty. Hi, Mr. Cooper. <laughs> Do you know what I've been doing for the last half hour? You've been looking through the suggestion box. I knew it was going to happen one of these days, Mr. Cooper. I've been expecting it. You see, the thing of it is, it takes a very special kind of employer to recognize that one of his men has got it. And obviously, McNulty does. Truer words, McNulty, have probably never been spoken here or anywhere else. I have just gone through the residue of the suggestion box covering the past three-month period. Here is your suggestion dated March 13th. Make hot dogs flat so they can fit more easily into a hamburger bun. Well, how about that? Now you think about that now, Mr. Cooper. <laughs> Make tin cans square so they can be stacked together more easily. Well, huh? <laughs> Isn't that a guess? You think about that, too. Put small pontoons in field packs of soldiers so that when they cross rivers, they can float. That's worth a million bucks as it stands, huh? <laughs> I mean, that one little suggestion. You see, the soldiers, they go into the water in the cans. Well, the cans, they're full of air, see, so... Mr. McNulty, the Cooper Corporation makes ladies' foundation garments. Not a single one of your 340 suggestions, repeat, not one of them, has anything remotely to do with this company's product. <laughs> Right! See? <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about that, too. What you ought to do is focus on new inventions for our customers. Our customers? Well, I've been doing some reading about pressure and leverage the principles of engineering, and one of the greatest engineers of the 20th century was Howard Hughes. Why, did you know that he invented the cantilevered brassiere? Huh? <laughs> he invented a, a, well, an undergarment that actually defied the laws of gravity, huh? <laughs> like a suspension bridge. And if it weren't for his little invention, nobody would have ever heard of <clears throat> Jane Russell. Huh? <laughs> Did you know that? I believe this company is well aware of the history of our product lines, and they don't have anything to do with 1940s movie stars or eccentric old recluses with mental delusions. Exactly! The key to a successful business is diversification. More products for more kinds of customers. Now you think about that. I have thought about it, McNulty. Now you think about this. Yes, sir. You're fired! Another round, McNulty? In a, in a minute, I'm, I'm still working on this one. Now over here, Joe. Coming right up. You know something? Oh, here we go again. With the long ball hitter, as opposed to the consistent clutch hitter with a big average, I will take the latter. Well, that's very nice of you to tell us, McNulty. Well, it's a fact that at no time, at, at, at no time, has the home run leader in either league led the league in batting at no time, which should tell you. Uh, Ted Williams won the batting championship and led the league in home runs in 1941, 42, and 47. The exception to the rule. <clears throat> Think about that now. The exception to the rule. Let me ask you something, McNulty. How come you're in here so early tonight? You've been sitting here now for three and a half hours. Well, for the simple reason that... I quit my job. No kidding. Yeah, I went into Mr. Cooper's office and I read him off. Just like that, you know, Cooper, I said. Don't tell me, McNulty. 
You got canned. Well, in, in, in a manner of, of speaking, you might say, well, yeah, we mutually agreed that I wasn't going to wor work there anymore. <sighs> Let me ask you something. Wouldn't, wouldn't you think that after one year of putting suggestions in the suggestion box, after one whole year, I'd get noticed? McNulty, you want to know something? Getting noticed and getting liked are two different things. What do you know about it? Nothing, McNulty. Not a thing. All I know is that every week of every month except election day, you come in here and drive everybody out of their skull walking on your lower lip. Now you think about that little thing, will you? For my sake. Where's my other beer? Right here. Thank you, barkeep. If you don't mind, I think I'll find myself a nice, quiet table to sit at. Goodbye. Excuse me, my good man. Is this seat taken? It is now. Sir! You, uh, you want another one? Thank you. I would consider it a kindness on your part. <clears throat> one more over here, please. So, what's your name? What's my name? Potts. 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 Well, that's not such a bad name. It is the one I was born with. Seems to me there was a third baseman played for the Phillies one year. Seems to me his name was Potts. Let's see, it was uh, Lou Potts, Frank Potts. Could it have been Bots? No. Potts! You paying, McNulty? Because this old rummy already gave me his last dollar. This man is my friend. And I like a little respect from you while you're at it. I bet you would, McNulty. And you getting respect from me would be about as easy as flagging down a cab on 46 and Broadway at 8 o'clock on New Year's Eve in the rain. Here you go. So, what do you want to talk about? You want to, want to talk about baseball? Well, it is a great American pastime, and I am so glad that Abner Doubleday saw fit to invent it. To your health, friend. And now, to show my appreciation for your generosity, I have something for you. Consider it a gift. A small remembrance of our friendship. Ah, huh. well, what is it? It's an old family heirloom. A kind of stopwatch, you might say. Why, why do you carry it around? I, I mean, you know, if it's, if it's just a stopwatch, it doesn't keep... Keep time, <laughs> right? <laughs> that is a fact. But it's all yours nonetheless. Someday you might own a racehorse. Or you might want to run the four-minute mile. Who knows? Now you've got a stopwatch to time yourself. <laughs> I've been looking for someone to give it to. I myself am finally finished with it. Goodbye, old pal. <laughs> E pluribus unum. <laughs> hey, hey, you, you didn't finish your beer. You done for the night, McNulty? There ain't no more ears in here you can bend. You bored ten people to death and you emptied this place faster than a smallpox sign. Funny looking watch. Anyway, <sighs> I hate to go home, Joe. I mean, geez, you know, I mean, I already saw the picture on the late show. I mean, I even saw the one on the late, late show. Hey, McNulty, do me a favor, would you? Whenever you get the thirst, go to some other bar. Sometimes, you know, I wish I was I was married, cause <laughs> so I wouldn't have to go anywhere, you know. You ever get that feeling, huh? <laughs> <sighs> I work this thing. Push the button on the top. And another thing about you, McNulty, you make me nervous. 
First you come in here, and then... What? <laughs> what? What's going on, Joe? Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey, Joe. Why ain't you moving, Joe? Joe, why don't you say something? I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's like he was, was frozen. <laughs> And what's with the TV? There was a game on. The guy started the pitch, and and well, you, well, you look at that. The ball's just hanging there. Did the TV freeze up or something? <laughs> Say, what is this? Something's going on. All I was doing was telling you about how bored I was, and then that crazy gleep gives me this watch here, and I push the button on it like this, and and you bore people to death. And then you start to make me so nervous, my back itches. And f <laughs> Hey, I kinda like this. Furthermore, it's getting so people don't stay very long in my establishment when you're around. They catch my drift, they stick their heads in, see you sitting here, and move on. In other words, you're costing me business, McNulty. Do I have to make it any plainer? So like I say, take it somewhere else, okay, pal? It's nothing personal. I make you nervous? <laughs> you don't suppose... You don't suppose this, this watch here... You know something, McNulty? You're the one guy who makes me wish they never repealed Prohibition. And you know what I think, Joe? I think this watch, this watch, this watch is a very unusual one. That's what I think. A very, very unusual watch. Huh? <laughs> hey, buddy. Watch where you're going. Oh, oh, oh. So sorry. <laughs> sorry, my good man. Yeah, you should be. Excuse me. Begging your pardon, lady. Officer, oh, officer. Yes, ma'am? That man over there, I think he's drunk. Oh, he is, is he? He bumped right into me. You can see the way he's staggering. He can hardly stand up. Oh, it's a disgrace. Well, now, we'll just see about that. Hold on there, fella. Yes, uh, officer? Had a little too much to drink, did we? Well, I wouldn't say that. Not enough. It's more like it. <laughs> Why don't you just go home and sleep it off? You'll feel better in the morning. Yes, yeah, of course, of course. I'm, uh, I'm on my way home now, as a matter of fact. Walking, are you? I'd say you're in no condition. You know, you're, you're right, officer. I was, I was just thinking about that. Well, get along with you now. Why should a man have to walk at all, right? He could fall down and get hurt. Now... Here's an idea for you. You make the sidewalks out of rubber, huh? <laughs> Think about that now, huh? No more injuries. You fall, you bounce right back up again. All the money the city could save. No more broken arms and legs to fix by the hospitals would save millions. Not to mention the, uh, the, uh, uh, insurance companies. I think I better call you a cab. Okay. I'm a cab. <laughs> you get it? You said I'll call you, and then I, I, I said, well. No more kidding now. None at all. I, I, I don't, I don't want a cab in, in the first place. I never stop for you. And in the second place, it takes too long on account of there's too much traffic in this city in the first place. Am I right or am I wrong? You tell me that. I'm not telling you nothing. Now listen. If you can't afford a cab, the subway's right at the end of the block. Now run along. Either that or I'll haul you in right now. On what charge, may I ask? Public intoxication. Plus you're making a real nuisance of yourself. Now quit flapping your lips and get a move on, you hear? Of course I do, officer. I hear the wisdom of your words, and I have enjoyed this conversation immensely. A good evening to you, sir. Let's go. I think I better take you down to the station house. But why bother, huh? I mean, you know, as long as I can hail a cab, let me let me show you McNulty's method. <clears throat> you watch, and you think about it now, okay? Taxi! 
<laughs> there, yeah. I think I can see a cab now. That one, in the middle of the street. How nice of the driver to stop just for me. Hello there, driver. What, not speaking, huh? <laughs> well, let me see what I can do to fix that. What? Hey, who are you? How'd you get in my car? Never mind, I'm here now, aren't I? Okay, okay, where to? Home, driver. Take me downtown by the shortest possible route, and you think about it now. Sure thing. Hey, 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 have you ever thought about this? Ban cars completely, you know, in, in, in the city at least, for starters. Helicopters. Now that's the future. Your private copters, okay? Each one big enough to hold one person. You think about the savings in, in, in gas, pollution, and traffic jam, not to mention police meter maids, no parking zones. Anything you say, buddy. Yeah, yeah, you see? You see? All you, all you do is you, you take some electric golf carts and you retrofit them with propellers on top and you plug them in, you charge them up and... Here you go. This here is it, mister. Far as I go. I think I'm gonna pack it in for the night. Thank you, my good man. That's 1780. How's that? The fare. Make it 18 bucks plus something for the wife and kids. Now, you see, that's just my point. All that money and for what? I say ban the internal combustion engine. Springboard shoes would work just fine. All we need is a company to manufacture a prototype. You gonna pay me or talk me to death? Neither, to tell you the truth. Do, uh... Do you have the time? <laughs> huh? The time. Here. Let's have a look at my pocket watch, shall we? Um, have I, have I told you about it yet? This is really a very unusual watch. A kind of, um... Stop watch. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Allow me to demonstrate. Don't try to con me. All I want is for you to pay up. If you don't, I'm calling this in. It's a violation of the city code to defraud a... There. Isn't that better? So much more restful. <sighs> I think I'll go inside now and lie down. No, 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 no. Don't, don't you worry about it. As soon as I get to my apartment, I'll open the window and hit the button on this stopwatch again, and you'll be on your way. And tomorrow morning, so will I. In fact, from the way things are going so far, I say that your friend and mine, the one and only Patrick T. McNulty, is going to be the life of the party. Yeah? <laughs> you be sure to think about that now, won't you? Stand back, world. McNulty is walking through the universe. Yes, it is. And a good good morning to you, listeners. We'll be bringing you the Eye of All News at 7:27. Oh, I forgot to turn the blasted alarm off. But for now, here's an update from Weather Central. Some overcast this morning with scattered clouds this afternoon. And now, back to this morning's casual concert for the swinging set. Eh, wrong. There is nothing moderate about today, because today is the day that people start listening to McNulty. Unless... Uh, unless it was some kind of dream. Now, where is that crazy watch? Aha! Here! All right, now, let's give it the old test. Ah, my kind of town. Millions of people going to work. No imagination. But McNulty, now that's a different story. A man who's just full of ideas, so original, they don't have a word for him yet. But they will. If this thing works. 
Well, here goes. <laughs> it's not a dream. It's not a dream. It's the goods. The real deal. This wonderful, gorgeous watch. I just push the button and everything stops. I mean everything. The whole world stops for me. <laughs> Get ready out there. McNulty steps up to the plate, he swings, and he swats it clean out of the park. There he is. Oh, no. Not McNulty again. What's doing here? Maybe he's going to shoot up the place. Morning, Angie. McNulty? You look lovely this morning, as always. What's the suggestion this time? Because if you haven't got one handy, I've got one for you. Yes? Why don't you jump off a bridge? <laughs> Honey, baby, you don't mean that. Wait till you see what I got in my pocket. It'll put a dent in your eyeballs. Try the Brooklyn Bridge at midnight. You think about this now. You think about a stopwatch that, uh, if somebody pushes it, everything stops in midair. Everything, huh? Huh? Think about that. Without a life jacket. McNulty, why don't you get lost? What's the point? You see this little gimmick? It's a watch, so... So, last night, I'm sitting in Joe Pellucci's bar. Figures. We're talking about this and that, and this funny little gleep comes in and gives me this watch. Without thinking about it, I give it a push. This little button right here. And everything stops dead. Pellucci stops, the ball game stops, you know what else? Everything! That's what stops. You think about that. No kidding. Joe Pellucci and the TV, too. Well, thanks for the entertainment. Now get out of here! After I see Cooper, it's time to diversify. Now you wait just a minute, McNulty. Mr. Cooper's in conference. You bet he is. He's in conference with me. I thought I fired you, McNulty. What are you doing back here? Mr. Cooper, he barged right in. I couldn't do anything about it. Well, if he barged right in, he'll barge right out again. Hey, listen, Coop. Coop? You can't afford to fire me. This time, I got more than a suggestion. I got the goods. You figure out how this little doohickey works, and you got yourself all the money in the world. McNulty, once more I remind you, we make ladies' foundations, nothing else. Did you hear me? Nothing else. Now I'll give you 15 seconds to leave this room, 25 seconds to reach the elevator, 45 seconds to vacate the building, and you may use that, that watch to time yourself. Is that a fact? All right, then. I'll go. Just remember, you lost a fortune today. <sighs> Why that gleep didn't even let me show him. McNulty, if you're not out of here in one minute, I'll call the police. So, what am I waiting for? I'll show him anyway. I'll show you all! Hello, operator. Get me... Now, you put that phone down and come with me. That's right. <laughs> in here. Right on Cooper's lap. <laughs> How about that, huh? <laughs> nice coffee. Right in the middle of pouring it, huh? <laughs> and you, hey, sweetheart. I like your typing. Don't your hands get tired up in the air like that, huh? <laughs> <sighs> All right, so it's good for a laugh, maybe. There must be something else I can do with this thing. Miss Hinkley, what do you think you're doing? Who's up next? 
Don't look now. It's the cleanup man. The guy could empty a baseball stadium, not to mention a bar. And if you don't spend three hours telling us how he'd run the Mets, he'll keep ootsing me about how I should run my own place. Hey, Joe. Hey, you want to hear a good idea? Why don't you make a swing indoor like in the movies, huh? Maybe change the name of the place, Pellucci's Western Saloon. Hey, how about that? Hey, McNulty, how about that? I'll have it done first thing in the morning. Ah, that's great. Then every time I come in, I'll push open a swing indoor and I'll think, I did this. Wait, well, you're not putting me on, are you, Joe? McNulty, the only thing I'd put you on is a slow freighter heading with the other side of the world. See ya, Joe. Yeah, I'm out of here. Relax, boys. You're about to see something you ain't gonna believe. Yeah, well, make it quick, huh? With this little gizmo right here, I can stop trains, buses, planes, subways. There ain't nothing in this world I can't stop. Yeah, what about your mouth? I gotta pour myself a drink. Watch this. All right, now, uh, hmm. I'll move your beer over here and put yours in front of him. And let's see. How about if I undo your tie like this, huh? <laughs> oh, and Joe, over there. Hey, why look, Joe, where's your glass now, huh? You're going to be pouring beer in your hand, huh? <laughs> All right, okay. Here we go again. Oh, what the... Well, huh? Well... Ah, come on now. What do you think about that, huh? Think about what? What, what, what are you kidding? You, did, you didn't see what I just did? Out of the way, McNulty. I want to make it home by the bottom of the eighth. See ya, Joe. Well, you done it again, McNulty. You emptied my bar. You drive more people out of saloons and carry nation. Oh, I get it. Of course you couldn't see what happened. Of course you couldn't. How could you? You guys got froze. I'm the only one who sees what's going on. The only one. Gee. So I got the greatest conversation piece in the world. The greatest. And what does it do? It stops conversation. Well, so it shouldn't be a total loss. You should order up. But drink it fast, will you? The combination of you, the hot weather, and my business recession is more than I can take for one day. Hey, Pellucci, look at me. What are you, some kind of sadist? Do you know what you're looking at? A jerk. A jerk, I'm telling you. A jerk, a nutsy, that's what you're looking at. You want to stop there or go for double or nothing? It's a fact. What do I want this thing for? I want to get a little notice, that's what. Well, let me tell you something, Pellucci. When John D. Rockefeller got out of a car, why did people go up to shake his hand? I'll bite. Why? Because he had dough. That's why. Lettuce, the old Mizzou. J.P. Morgan walks into a bar. The head waiter almost breaks his neck trying to get a table ready. Why? I'll tell you why. Because J.P. Morgan was loaded. You think about that now. And you think about this. As of today, McNulty's gonna be loaded too. I'm gonna have a limousine drive me up here. I'm gonna have a chauffeur open the door. I'm gonna walk into this crummy joint of yours and buy about 18 rounds for everyone. Huh? Huh? And then, and then, just for a laugh, I'll buy a mortgage. You don't mind if I don't hold my breath, do you, McNulty? Pellucci, old pal, take a good long look. The next time you see me, I'll be the new McNulty. Why didn't you go the whole route and move to Honolulu? Pellucci, tonight I'll be able to buy Honolulu. I'd like to make a deposit to my account. You have to wait in line. I want to cash this check. All in large bills, ma'am. Next customer in line. Is this where I make a withdrawal? Yes, sir. How much would you like? Oh, I don't know. How much you get? Sir? I'll take small bills. Lots of them. Just need your bank account number. Right here. Oh, you want me to get them for you? Oh, sure. No problem. Well, let's see. Oh, a bag of fives. And some tens. And uh, <laughs> some twenties while I'm at it. Yeah, let's see that how to do it. Oh, don't worry, folks, it's only money. <laughs> it grows on trees. That's what it does, right? It grows on trees. For me. <laughs> Okay, here we go. One, two, three! My watch! <laughs> uh, oh, uh, 
Well, it better be shockproof. Hey. Hey, start already. Come on. Hey, what's the matter with this thing? Hey, uh... Hey. Hey, everybody can start moving again, okay? All right, come on, come on, here we go! Up, 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 come on, let's go, come on, get with it! Hey! Hey, uh, any, any, anybody know how to fix a watch? Come on, come on, anybody, anybody, give me a little help here! Joe, Joe, please! Please, do something, say something, go ahead, you know, insult me! Please! Please, won't somebody do something! Or say something, hey, please! Don't anybody, don't anybody know where I can get a watch fixed? I'm begging you, please! Hey! Hey! Anybody! Anybody! Please! Please do something! Say something! Anything! Mr. Patrick Thomas McNulty, who was given the gift of unlimited time, he used it and misused it, and now he's been handed the bill. Mr. McNulty, who now controls the earth and everything on it, from this point on, he will eat well, live well, and have everything at his beck and call. But the thing he wanted most, the thing that gave him the most acute hunger, his need for a sympathetic ear, this he will never have again. Tonight's tale of motion and the lack thereof, and a man named McNulty in a place called the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com, where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. A Kind of Stopwatch starring Lou Diamond Phillips with Stacey Keach as your narrator was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Rick Peoples, Mike Baccarella, Guy Burrill, Meg Falcon, Maggie Carney, Rich Kamenick, Doug James, Carl Amari, Roger Wolski, and Irene Olson. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. Hey.